All right, getting the portfolio up. First up is Forcelang. Oh no, what is going on? My Wacom is like acting up. I'd be lying if uh, I didn't say that Mario would shoot on the pen recently. <laughs> Come on. Maru, no! It's kind of like that. Alright, we're gonna... I think it's... Huh, weird. It seems selective on what it's, like, auto-scrolling on. Okay. Going manual. Uh, what time I'll critique? So in about 50 minutes, I'm going to start critiques. Oh, the donation button's above the... Nah. Oh, yeah, I have a jar. Ha! <laughs> it's got little Maru heads in it. Is that, like, fucked up? I don't know if that's fucked up. Is this going to work? Yes! Holy content, man. D-nasty. What's up, dude? How you doing? Is this... Uh, what? What is this? Hang on here. Okay, so I should be able to see everything from subs to follows to re uh, that can't think hosts. Can you do something with the with the jar? So I believe if you donate a bit, it will drop in there. But I don't know if it's a bit or if it's if it's five bits. I can't remember. <laughs> don't judge me. I don't know. I try not to care about money too much, but maybe I should make sure that the systems work for the people that actually <laughs> give me something. All right, dude, this portfolio is crazy. Let's uh, let's see if the if my pen is okay. Looks to be all right, but you're gonna want to see my mouse. All right, I'm gonna use the mouse with the left hand. Holy content, Batman. I'm Batman. All right. Creating stunning environments for video games. Oh, you got an about section. Oh. Uh oh, yeah, okay. There you go. Oh, awesome. In your about section, you got your... What are you currently working on? Oh, that's cool. That's a cool way of doing it. Nice. This is good. I can't tell. Is this using a uh, art station? It's pretty good if you can't tell. And you have a blog too. Darkland Chaos, dude. What's up, dude? Dude, dude, my dude, dude. Oh, yeah. How's it going? I know you now. How do you how do you say your uh, your last name? Lano. It's Squarespace, dude. Cool. Look at this guy doing talks and stuff. Jesus, I just sit in a closet to do that. I can't handle. <laughs> All right, you got your go to your art station. This is uh, yeah. This is overall. This is really good uh, coverage. Okay, and then if we go back to the portfolio, so this wall is like. Whoa, it's pretty cool. Uh, I think I I think I'm okay with the count because usually there there's a there's a point where uh, there's too much on the screen. You know what I mean? And I think I think you're okay. It's not like too. I mean they're busy, right? But you don't want to like desaturate them to control the scene. You don't want to like uh, blur the images to try and hide what's going on. It's like solid sound, like why? Lano? 
like that, Lano. But yeah, this portfolio is sick. I apologize for names, by the way. I'm just freaking terrible at them. So okay, let's uh, let's let's just click through some of these. So, oh, this is interesting. Okay, so navigation-wise, I get a little confused. Uh, the previous and next is really small. So that's uh, it's at the bottom and it's really small. So usually you start at the top when you start looking at content or looking at a page rather. Um, or DX or what's up, man? I don't know if I said your name right, but hello or hey, hello. Um, this is cool though. This seems awesome. There's a little bit of a clash between uh, the modeled textured rocks and then this, uh, this looks like tiled like a tiled photo, uh, this this area in here. Blending blending between these two uh, a bit smoother will help in here. Nah. Um, yeah, blending between these where it transitions to this tileable strip because I assume you're you're either manually placing these or you've got a set and you're placing them across. Oh yeah, you saw the podcast with Hamish? Dude, that guy's awesome. I love everything that guy does. He's an inspiration. Um, so you've placed all these rocks and then you've got a tiling strip through here, right? That's, you know, it's tiling this way, for example. Um, and then you've got more pieces at the bottom to help blend the transition. And then some dirt and yeah. Just getting that to all read to read together manually placing, dude, you you crazy, you crazy. Um, blending those together is gonna help a lot. Uh, the play space, it's really good that it's so open, and then you've got these paths helping uh, guide the guide the player. Uh, just understanding where they can navigate. I'm not quite like I haven't actually looked close enough at this game, so I'm imagining this is like a PvP map, and you can like boost across this spot here. Um, I should probably look at the mechanics before I start talking about your guys' gameplay. Uh, <laughs> but uh, dude, I love this fence stuff too. This is really cool how it's all kind of separated out like that. So if we look at Let's see here. I think in general for what it is, like what it's trying to do, it's it's doing a really good job. Uh, the amount of breakup you have on the tops of the fences here, I would love to see a little bit of that on the gates, although probably less so that way it really feels that the solid like you're talking about. Uh, Junglist. Uh, industry standard is 3ds max moto is quickly taking over um, I wouldn't say the entire industry but it's expanding at an alarming rate right now and I think uh, I think moto would probably be easier to learn it's a lot more forgiving when you do something wrong not that max isn't but less crashy I guess uh, let's see what else we got here let's let's go ahead and go to the next the next image just because this is more more maps from the so the players enter from both sides I take it and um, it's interesting you have some some green so you've got the green team and the red team you've you've placed out some uh, green props for where green guys have fallen and red for where red guys have fallen uh, I'm just kind of talking about what I'm seeing right now because it's it's pretty cool, man. Uh, maybe thickening up, thickening up these walls back here would help um, add to that structure. You know, making it it strong, uh, making the wall look stronger. I mean, I feel like for the style that you're going for, this everything is fine. Like, 
you have you have a lot of hard edges or edges that feel like they're really sharp, but because of the style that we're we're seeing, uh, it, that's fine. The blending between the snow and the tileable maybe needs like a height map to help like um, blend the snow a little bit more naturally between cracks and stuff. I don't know if that's a performance uh, thing though. Yeah, uh, 3ds Max has been around for a while, so it does have a lot of scripts. But I mean, I'm faster in Moto than I was in Max, and I used Max for five years, and I'm at Moto for th for two and a half now. Uh, your trees look really good. I think that um, maybe in the alpha, splitting up the the fronds or fronds, the the leaf bits. I don't even know the pine. Pine's hard to to do alpha for because it's it's so finite. But like if you can uh, artificially, it's like they can't be as dense as they are in real life, or else they just mip out and become solid really quickly, right? And again, it kind of fits for the style here. But I think uh, if you were to do that and maybe add a little bit of ambient occlusion, maybe even in the vertex paint, you can get a little bit more separation between like the caps, like. Um, like it's like this and then you have another one that's doing this and then maybe this one comes down here like that uh, getting getting AO under these to help separate out these pieces would be really helpful look at that oh, I just ruined everything ruined but yeah to be able to separate out those parts disclaimer I don't do these trees ah that is a good disclaimer. <laughs> well, now how you now you know how to make the trees uh, better than uh, you know the person who did do them. I don't know. Um, the normal on the uh, banners feels pretty strong versus the normal on the brick. So they it's it's like popping out quite a bit more from the wall. Uh, probably given the style of this, I would use the normal in like substance painter or something to paint those creases and stuff. So go like full on like color, like albedo uh, wrinkles and stuff like that to, to try and get that look. Um, and then maybe they're too dark in value. So they're really like separating themselves from the scene. Like, especially you can see it here in the shadow right here. Like those, those are in shadow and now you really see the value difference between them. I wonder if there's a, I probably just have to, probably just have to do that and open some photo poo. Get up, get down. So if you desaturate, so you go black and white, look how dark those are. It's pretty, it's pretty intense. Uh, I wonder if we can, I'll just, dude, this song's like really weird. I'm just gonna roughly do this. I don't expect it to be perfect, although I want it to be. And then deselect it. <laughs> uh, bleh. gonna scale this up to hide the <laughs> like see already how how much that uh blends in with the rest of the environment now and then if you desaturate it it's really subtle but it's sitting it's sitting in the same range as uh as this stuff now like stuff in shadow 
which is a little bit easier to for the eyes to swallow. Eyes swallowing. Ugh. Ugh. Max, 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 what's up? There's nothing wrong with either of them, by the way. You can be a badass in either or. Uh, let's let's go ahead and keep going. This one's really cool. Uh, you can see like the trees because of the strong lighting direction. Like, I almost feel like the ambient in this is just too bright. Whereas this one, the ambient is almost almost right. The ambient, what I'm talking about when I say the ambient is like in the shadows here. The ambient is filling the shadows with some color and value. So that way it's not so, uh, it doesn't just become full dark or like become black where there's no pixel information. <laughs> like this. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so this one has like a really nice balance with the, uh, the ambient lighting, which is helping the trees get that separation. The composition of this is very um, deathmatch, which is fine. Uh, this shape here is a little confusing to me. I'm not sure. Like, I guess I, I think that's a log. I think maybe incorporating that somewhere else to be able to understand, make sense out of it would help. I'm not sure what that is, though. Maybe it's a root. I don't know. Uh, the depth of field that you're doing here, I don't know if that's for the engine, but uh, you should try and turn that off, I guess, when you're doing this scene, unless you want it to look like a miniature. Um, there's a seam in the water right here, I, I think. I think that's what that is. It's like right, right there. Um, and then doing something about, uh, okay, I see it over here. The, the edge of the water looks like it's being affected by the rock. I think getting some, um, getting that further out or extra layers and like floating cards um, would help. I freaking love these lily pads. It's super cool. The also, uh, the also, also the, <laughs> the, hand placed rocks and the tileable rock texture are actually doing much better in this one. It looks like they're from the same like uh, material. Um, while I want to comment on the transition between the rock and the grass, I think it's really good that uh, there's a clear definition between the two. So it's almost debatable if you should touch it or not. Like doing these little rocks around here like doing a little bit of that around here to just help blend the transition between the grass and the rock will help. But going any further than that might be a little, little too much. And then the players start to uh, get confused as to where the edge of the play space is as far as on foot. Um, maybe you could go into the shader of the rocks and add like moss green stuff that kind of gets into little crevices and, and stuff like that around just the top that could that could do the same effect as adding these little rocks oh, let's see what else we got here oh yeah dude i like this one i like this one a lot is there yeah there's more images of it okay go back so when i see these images um i'm really curious about like if there was a concept behind it or if uh like what your thought process was while you were working on it, like the work in progress. And I don't think I see that in here. I, you might have that somewhere on your page. Oh, a follow. Oh, a follow puts a thing in there too. Cool. I like this. You can do it for free. Thanks for the follow. Glasses Bear. <laughs> Lovely name. That's amazing. Uh, you will have to ask uh, Tobias that. Tobias, Tobias, he will know. I'm I'm not very. Uh, it bounced out of jar. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so close. 
Almost 2K. Feeling it. Feeling it. So this scene turned out really well, and it came together really quickly. I think uh, where you're... Well, no, I see the reflections in this angle, so I think that's that's pretty good. I, f I feel like the statue is lacking a bit of uh, silhouette power. Oh, the silhouette power. Hey, the cubic cat, how are you doing? Did a coin not drop that time? What's happening? I'm sad. I'm sad. Anyways, this is really cool. I I feel like uh, maybe the edge here could, could use some, some love just to kind of break it up a little bit more. But uh, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it doesn't need that. Material-wise, though, it, it feels a little low poly, and I'm trying to figure out how you would approach. It sticks out, is I guess what I'm saying. And of course it sticks out. It's a giant, like, <laughs> monkey thing the size of mountains. Martin, how you doing? So as far as displaying this, I would actually like to see this image and this image maybe in the same shot or right below each other. And then you scroll down and you see the uh, the process behind it. Lorg, what's up, man? How you doing? Any news? You know what I'm talking about. Just chilling and listening to your critique. Oh, thanks, dude. Thanks, dude. None yet? Soon. Soon, I'm sure. Uh, the insides of these spaces are very uh, one one power, if that makes sense. Like the, the value in here, there's no gradient. So you can't tell like the source of the light. Like I would love to see like light coming out like this. So then here it's at its brightest and it gradients out as it goes so then it gives you a direction see then then you'd make sense of like spatially what's happening like oh that actually goes that goes inward that way and that one's this way it helps uh confirm a viewer's uh three-dimensional understanding of what they're looking at there's a little bit of uh depth loss here where i'm not sure like like I know this one's close and this one's close, but then I don't know if I don't know if this one's the next closest one or if it's the same as this one. I don't even know if that's the shape. That's another thing. So I think um, maybe as stuff gets further away, what's up, Spunky? How you doing? Uh, maybe as stuff gets further away, you could. Uh, do a combination of this fog you're doing and then also a combination of taking the ambient, uh, that glow, that green glow that you have happening under stuff and either lowering the strength of it or removing it as it gets further away. It could probably help you get some separation in this in this area specifically. Uh, the other thing you could do is if this, um, making fog card planes because this is a very uh, uh, focused like controlled angle, you can use fog planes that are like, you could even hand paint them and then place those between things to help get separation and layering, which is totally okay. Let's, uh, let's look around a little bit more. I like, this is awesome. I really like these, these little like uh, lily, like lily pad flowers. I feel like if the lily pads had like a little bit of a inset in the normal of the middle of it, that you get a lot more like uh, depth to your to your lily pads. They won't feel so flat because lily lily pads are pretty flat. But I, at the edge, they kind of curl down or up, and then the center will will kind of dip down into the water. So this one, let's see here. I need to go actually go back to your portfolio to look at it from from the front. From Tay Front. I think showing a little bit more in depth could be could be nice. Um, if you do that, make sure that maybe like previous and next, maybe it's up here. 
make sure that they can see a little bit of an image below or they're going to assume that this is the only image. And for me, I assumed that there was actually more and tried to scroll down and actually didn't end up seeing anything. Oh yeah, for anyone uh, listening, uh, Lorg, he's like, I've known him forever now. Uh, he, he used to stream and he was streaming before me. I think he still streams on and off, but he streams playing games and uh, he's an all around fun guy to listen to talk. Listen, listen to him talk about just random. So let's, let's go. Just looking around. This is really cool. So getting that color in the back, that's different from the rest is, it's awesome. So you got the green, you've got the warm color, and then you got this, this blue in the back. It's been a minute. Awesome. A Seattle minute. <laughs> So right now, this this scene, I think, is your weakest one out of all of them. And I think it's because it's going outside of your comfort zone. A lot of your work is very stylized, right? It's, it's cartoony, uh, cutesy, exaggerated shapes. Maybe not cutesy. I don't know. Some people are sensitive to that word. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so this one's going for a much more realistic um, approach and uh, like I can feel it in your materials that you're not quite sure where where to take them um as far as like their pbr values and such so like this here that actually looks pretty good this information i'm not sure i don't know where that's coming from or what it is um for a screenshot i wouldn't have the sparks in it because it'll just cause confusion as so what are those is that like what, what's happening uh the painting decal stuff on the on the brick, yeah. The uh, the way that's painted on there feels like it's it's placed on top of it versus like um, like you would see the brick through it and maybe it would just be like uh, a brighter color affecting only the albedo and uh, roughness. Um, and then for the ground. The ground is very, like, uh, there is some breakup stuff happening here. Uh, but it's really, like, there's so much detail. Well, it's not crazy, but it's it's a good amount of detail of stuff happening along the walls that's breaking up the flat surface. And you don't notice how flat the wall is because of that. It's so, like up here, you can see it a little bit. And, like, taking this edge and maybe beveling that, and taking that edge, beveling it, It's it's getting to the point where... Now I'm wondering why the, the ground is so blank, right? And then doing stuff like uh, f fixing a shadow, like shadow basics. I call them shadow basics, but they're like, not because they're, not because it's a basic thing you should always do, but it's like, it's a basic shadow. So it's very clean, which is, it looks strange in, in video games. In real life, a, a clean shadow like that can be okay. And like, as it gets further away from an object, you expect it to kind of diffuse, like the edge will to broaden. Um, it's like ray tracing almost. Uh, but that edge is really like this little kink here. And then there's a little bit here. If there was like an AC unit that stuck out that broke the edge a little bit here, or maybe like the grating on the windows. Right now the grating on the windows is inset. What if it was built onto this and then had to like come out and was like in the street a little bit so it's like off of the building slightly and then going like this now immediately you get a lot more silhouette uh bang for your buck if you want to call it that uh and then that would actually happen along the shadow as well but think about what goes in these areas um usually back alleys the ground is dipped uh, in the middle so that there can be a little drain and anything that any rainfall can drain to the, the middle and then make its way to the drain. Uh, looking at what else can be in alleyways, maybe there's like these are here, right? These are to protect, I assume these are to protect all this stuff from being hit by cars. So there should be another one here and maybe another one here. Uh, maybe a bumper on this one and a bumper on the end one. There's uh, there's 
plenty of room for like trash and, and all that stuff. Alleys are usually old, yeah, beat up pavement. So lots of cracks can happen in there. Um, by the drain, you could have cracking that's kind of given way to like exposing the old brickwork under it, like uh, Lorg's saying. Um, it's just, just getting trash and like because of this indent, even if it was dry out, you would get a little bit of sediment buildup in there. So that would cause like that, that area to be lighter. Uh, maybe construction is coming through. So there's like, with construction, they, they have like, oh, like this is a power line, like a uh, sub power line. And then they draw an arrow going this way. And that means don't, don't dig here. <laughs> there's a, there's a power line there. You're going to sever it and cut power to this whole building. So you and they all have specific colors. It's, it's all very organized, uh, coordinated effort those all those random markings you'll see on roads where they're doing this they're doing crosses circles with one line through it some letters over the top of that all has meaning yeah puddles are a great excuse as well puddles uh, puddles are perfect for stuff like this for breaking stuff up like this do this this song <laughs> Brick, brick walls, man. Um, this shot, I actually like a lot. It's really soft, but the mood is being captured. This is like super cool. I think that the, uh, let's see here, where it's kind of breaking down is you've got a weird inset right here. So it's like casting a shadow. Like maybe bring those, that face a little bit more forward so that it's not casting shadow so quickly. Uh, and then your your trees are clumping in uh, what do you how would you what would you call that your trees are clumping in very uh, digital um, inorganic ways I guess especially like this repeat one that I keep seeing trying to get get those clumps to kind of blend into each other so that they don't uh, separate themselves like that is really important. I'm assuming it's a speed tree because that's, that's something you'll, you'll fight with in speed tree sometimes. Uh, AO and it's pretty good. Uh, the other problem too, is they're also very solid because they look like they're suffering from that alpha problem I was talking about where you get really finite detail. The mood though is like, it's awesome. Composition's really strong. You've got, you've got this piece here. You've got this here. This all leads this direction. This isn't centered, which I really like. I'm glad that that's not centered. So let's see here. I need, I need straight lines for this jazz. So I like that everything is kind of slanting down. It's all kind of pointing here, which is cool. And nothing is really centered up, which is also really good. These windows feel like they might be a little high, like to the top of the roof. So like the window edge, you think about if you're in the room, that means that you only have like, like this much before you hit the ceiling, which I mean, maybe it's a really old building and they just don't, they didn't build like that. But whenever you see windows, imagine you're standing there and imagine where your legs are at. And that's kind of like where the floor is. And then you can assume where the next window should be spacing wise to the floor. That's all like up here though, just kind of making it up. Just thinking about that stuff to try and space things out more naturally will help you a lot. Uh, I really like this wood beam thing here. I think that's what that is. I drew over it now. I think something else along the lines, maybe here or here to separate the floors could really help. Uh, give a, a bit more structure to the building. Maybe one that goes, ah, that might be too much, but maybe some other windows back here. Even if it's just being hinted at, maybe like right right behind the, the tree. And then uh, these little gaps here, I feel like might be revealing too much. Like they're telling me that there's nothing over there maybe. 
this kind of gives that vibe too. I probably just put a building behind this one that's further back just to block it and or like take this wall, just dupe it and move it back there to kind of block the shot so that these don't shine through. Uh, let's, let's go onward. Oh, I remember this is one of the first things you posted. Grip, what's up? How's it going? Hey, Axel. Lorg sharing uh, images for for reference as well. So go ahead and look at those. RGB Watts. It kind of looks like a painting. It's like, oh, I like it. <laughs> I have a great memory. My memory is terrible. The only thing that makes a great memory is when art is impactful to the point where you can't help but not... Uh, not forget it is that i feel like i walked into a corner with that one it's it's too memorable <laughs> that that is a glass full of maru heads <laughs> oh man so compositionally this one's really strong uh minus one thing well two things so you've got your elements here we Scribbly do. That's another thing I really like about it is this all those edges are so broken up, it's just it's it's stylistic uh it's like stylistic shape choice instead of like, oh that's geometry. You know? Um Yeah, Jay, I don't know how long uh, I think I met you in two thousand four. Something like that. Jay was my RA in my dorm. Um and then you have this element here, which is cool. And then you have the background. Sorry if I offended. <laughs> no, you're fine, man. So I, I like that this is here because it kind of feels like you're peeking over and you, um, I'll let Lord. MySpace was a thing back then. Uh, I'll let Lori explain what an R is. So the elements up front are nice and close to you. Uh, they are cutting into what you're trying to see here. And then the background doesn't really like everything back here is, is getting lost. Like I'm not seeing any of that. And which is, which is okay. I think there should be something back there. Uh, let me like clear this. If there was like, see these roots, if there were some bigger roots off in the distance that were way back there, and may, maybe some ruins or some, like a large ruin wall that's you can tell is really far back because of maybe like the atmosphere or something in between you, between this and this object. Uh, but taking this and maybe scaling back, like I really like this spot. That's, as you can tell, <laughs> I like that spot. Uh, this part and this part maybe if those are scaled back down to like this and then uh that would end up opening up let's let's say the ground is here that would end up opening up the ground more like maybe like that much and then if that's the case then you can take things like these rocks or maybe some individual bricks and place them to just break up the like little pebbles and stuff too those can be geo doesn't it don't matter. You can pay for so much geometry these days. Uh, just to make the empty ground not so empty now that it's been exposed. And then it'll also, it'll frame this up much better, which is good. Oh, I really like this one. Like look at the shadow, like the colors and the shadows are really cool. Super, super cool. Someone's got an obsession with placing trees in threes. Unless they're grouped like that. Like this one intentionally, there was an extra tree placed just to try and get rid of the threes. It was removed from this one. Conspiracy. Dude, Magica. <laughs> 
Yes, so true. So this one's really cool. There's some weird, uh, some weird lighting stuff happening here, or maybe it's normals, or it's just the way the, just that edge. I'm not sure what what's happening there. In general, though, this is really cool. Like I, I like the ruin elements here, and I think that uh, the thing in the middle that's glowing, like it's super bright maybe toning down the brightness so it was like more along this range and maybe hitting a little bit of the bottom of this because my my brain wants to say that this is part of this stuff but it's so bright that it 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 disconnects from it right because it's being it's being lit so so much in general though this is this is cool i really like this one the environment in the background is very strange to me, but I mean, I think that's a uh, because of the game you're making, right? That almost like get someone to to hand paint that pattern, just so it has the painterly effect with the strokes and stuff as well. Yeah, the shadows are really cool. Like this shadow, for example, in this one, like the color here versus the color over here. Oh man, there's just nice gradients happening. It's really cool. I like uh, these aspects as well, where you have like the the larger, It's it looks like it's only happening back here, but it's like the larger rocks that are on top of the, the dirt. Like you're even breaking a little bit here, which is cool. And then there's a big rock here. So it almost feels like this piece could fracture off, which is pretty, pretty awesome. All right, so we took a lot of time on this portfolio. Uh, this one is also cool, nice ambient to it. The fires are a little bright, but this feels really cool. The trees feel really small to me. Yeah, the trees feel really like the trees feel like they're about half the size. This one's solid though, and I love the the mood is different. There's like I almost feel like there should be little uh, pieces of um, little pieces of burnt like uh, ash floating around in the air or something. Almost Silent Hill, but not that much. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, this is this is also another really strong composition where you you framed up the centerpiece, and you've got your you got your elements here. You've got this. Like your foreground and background, look at that. It's like a smiling, huh, interesting, interesting. Hmm. Um, <laughs> in general, this is pretty cool. Like the, yeah, I've, I'm like trying to, this one's solid. I feel like uh, maybe in the distance, again, maybe duplicating some of the trees, hidden message, uh, duplicating some of the trees, maybe some of this element, and just kind of duping them in the background in the distance, maybe really soften the fog. Um, yeah, I think that would help. Oh, these trees are really close together. They look like they're duplicates of each other. Just as a heads up. Um, cool. I mean, obviously you're ready for you're ready for the industry. You're you're in the industry. Um, I would say that you need to uh, if you want to get into more realistic stuff, which I know you've told me before, you're really interested in, is to start pushing like uh, prop production. And just building assets and getting your albedo, your albedo right, or or your PBR, I should say, getting all your physically physically based materials on on point, um, and then everything else should kind of fall into place. There's a little bit, just a FYI for people saying puddles. There's a little puddle there. See, I think if there's a puddle here, uh, maybe that drain, that could help. Anywho. We gotta get to the next portfolio because yeah.
There's supposed to be two. And then an hour of your guys' critiques. What am I even what am I even doing? What's even happening? How are you doing? Ash Ashila twenty seven, thank you for the follow, by the way. I didn't uh, get a chance to thank you. I was in it. I was in the portfolio. Like I couldn't couldn't stop. Make a fire hydrant. Do it. Go now. Go, go, go. All right, I will be right back. <laughs> 